Hold up, these photos weren't taken by a professional photographer. They were created with AI in under 10 minutes and for less than $5. Today, I'm showing you my exact process that saved me thousands in photo shoot costs and I can put myself anywhere I want in my photos. Plus, I'm gonna reveal the one prompt tweak that makes your AI photos look actually real. Meets ambition. Hey there, I'm Michelle Anderson, and welcome to my channel where I help entrepreneurs leverage AI to scale their business without burning out. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because every week I'm going to share actionable AI strategies that save you hours of work. All right, and so today I'm going to show you how to create your own images, professionally looking images. If you're like me, I hired several years ago, not so several, but I hired a professional photographer to do, I needed some headshots. I needed some professional images to use on my website, in my branding, on my social media. And then I've been using those same photos ever since, and I'm tired of looking at them the same. I'm wearing the same clothes, the same hair, the same photos over and over. And so now I have a solution where I can create a whole variety of images so that it really freshens up my, um, you know, my content. And yeah, I don't have to go out and hire a photographer, get my hair done, do all the things that you need to do, and also spend loads of money. So I'm going to show you how you can do that for yourself today. So here we are. The first thing you are going to need to do is, yes, you're going to have to take some photos of yourself. They don't need to be professional photos, but you do want to have good lighting and you do want to have uh, a variety of photos. Uh, one mistake that I made was that most all my photos, and you're going to want 15, 20 is probably a good number. But one mistake I made was I did all headshots mostly. I think I only have one that's like more of a full body. So you're going to want to create a variety of photos. You want to change up your clothing uh, so that, and then also your poses, just to give the AI um, the ability to be able to tell and differentiate who you are in the photos. So you want to go out, get some good lighting. Your camera on your phone is good enough and you want to take a variety of photos, different clothing, different uh, angles of your face and whatnot and get some full body shots and uh, some close up shots. So that's what you're going to want to do first. And I'm going to show you here. So I have a variety here. You can see uh, almost all of them are headshots. And I think I only have like one that's a little bit more full body. And so the only thing is I'm going to have to go back in later and train it because it doesn't really know what my body looks like. And so I get a wide range of looks. And so, um, but you can see here, let me do this as a list so you can kind of see. I have named them all. This is really important to name them all the same and photo of, and then you can see, well, Actually, I ended up taking out the Hodge, but Michelle Anderson. And this is going to be important because in the end, that's what you're going to use as a trigger so that it knows to use you, what it, you, you've trained the AI on. So photo of Michelle Anderson, 01, 02, so all the way through. And then I named the, fo uh, the folder the same thing. And then you're going to, depending on if you're a Mac user or or PC user, you're going to want to zip it. So you can see here on a Mac, it's, um, see, it's a control, and then you can see compress. So that's what I did. And now I have this zip file of all my images. And where I'm going to go to get started, now uh, what we're going to use is the flux.1 model. And there's some different uh, tools you can use, but this is the one that I'm showing you how to use. And I found it pretty straightforward and easy to, to use. So you go to fal.ai. If you don't have um, a, a GitHub account, you can easily sign up for one. 
um, and then you're going to log in. So the very first thing you are going to need to do is you're going to need to go to billing and you're going to have to put some money on it because this isn't free, but it actually is extremely cheap comparing to, you know, hiring a, a professional. I've put $20 in to start out with and the training aspect of it takes a couple dollars depending on if you run it once. Um, and then each photo itself is very, very cheap. It depends, it's based on the pixel usage, but I've got hundreds of photos and you can see I still have $7.24 left in my account. Um, so you're going to want to set that up first, put a little money on it, and then you're going to want to go to this Flora, Flux Laura Fast Training. If you don't see it right here, right away, you can just search for it and then, um, and then go to that window. So it's really straightforward here. You can see pick a zip file. So you're going to want to go and you're going to find that zip file and open it. And then you're going to this one here. You can see I have named it Michelle Hodge Anderson. Uh, so that is what I'm going to put in here. Now I'm not going to train mine because I already have, but you would put the trigger word that you want and that's your name. Um, and I don't think you don't need to really do anything here, but then you click start. And then what you're going to see is it's going to pop over here. It's going to be pending. It's going to be whatever. And then once it's done, it'll say completed. So I'm going to just kind of take that out. Um, and then once you can see, I've already trained mine. And then once you click on run inference, it will open up the place where you can actually Put the prompts in, and if you don't know what a prompt is, a prompt is any um, thing that you use, you put in, any text that you put in to actually get out something from the AI. So you can see it already has my name in here. And uh, I can put in here uh, any sort of, you know, prompt after this. So what did I do to create some different prompts? I'm going to show you a couple different processes that I used. And one particular thing you can do to make it look like a genuine photo right off your phone. And, but before we do that, I'm going to just kind of show you some other results. Um, let me put this so you can see here, all these images that I've created so far, not 100% of them are going to be great. Um, they're not all going to be usable. I think I have, let me see, let me share this one with you. And <laughs> I found that it was making me a blonde sometimes. So what I started doing was making sure that I put, you know, my a little bit more specific with ombre and hair. I could get a little bit more specific even if I wanted to. But what I ended up doing was I found some images that I liked from some, you know, other photo shoots. I went to ChatGPT, you can see here. And I said, act as an expert in image prompting and photography and help me describe this photo. So I went through the process. I wanted to be focused on the style. And then I got the style here. I said, you know, put it into a prompt. So I got a prompt and then I was able to copy this and put it in after, um, let's see, where is it? Put it after my, what I initially wrote in here. Okay. So I'm going to do this again because I do have, just to show you, let's see here. I do have an image that I liked too. Um, and I put it in here. I wanted to get an image like this. Let's see. Can you help me write a prompt for this image? It may come up with a little bit too much. We'll see. All right. Well, so let's just take it in exactly what it gave us. I mean, I could tweak it. I don't know if I want to wear a black suit. I could change that. But for now, let's just take it in and put it after. And so what you're going to do here is you don't need to change too much, but I would play with the guidance scale. I usually keep it somewhere between 9 and 12, just playing with it a little bit. Um, for this one, I think I'm going to keep it just right there in the middle at 10. And then the number of images. Now, you could do four images at a time, but just know that the more images you're generating at a time, then it's going to eat up your money faster. So, And I like variety, so I generally tend to only do one or two photos 
at a time. And so once you have your prompt in and you've set that, I'm going to click run. Like I said, not 100% of the photos are usable, but I would say a majority of them are usable more than not. So look at that image. I love it. I think that's really interesting. I could use that in a, you know, professional content that I'm doing either on my website or my social media or whatever I need to use it in. So there you go. I'm going to download that. Um, the other thing is I forgot to mention is that you can actually select the output form. I usually tend to choose PNG. I forgot to mention that. Um, but I can download that image. I noticed that when, by the way, when I noticed when I used descriptors like glamorous, elegant, things like that, it did help the images look more um, professional as I wanted them to. So just as a side note, but let's say I want to be, um, um, I'm just going to put myself in the forest. One thing you could do if you want it to look like it came from your phone, look really realistic, is put IMG underscore, give it a number, zero, zero, one, dot H-E-I-C. So if you put that in there, that will actually give it that. It's reading it, you know, like it's from the phone kind of thing. So let's see what it comes up with. So that was a very simple prompt. I didn't put too much in there. And there we go. So it's got that definitely, you know, would I use this or not? I don't know. I can play again with the guidance scale. I wonder if I turned it down a little bit. What I would come up with. Ah, I like that one. See, but it gives a little bit more of a, hey, I took this with my phone selfie look to it by just adding that little bit to it. Um, I'm going to download that one. All right. So what do you think? Awesome, right? If you went ahead and did this tutorial, I would love to see the results. Drop them in the comments below and uh, let's share. So do you want to make your ChatGPT even more powerful? Well, next week, I am going to walk you through the exact settings that you need to unlock ChatGPT's full potential, including hidden features that most people don't know about. So hit that notification bell, and I'm going to see you in the next video.